It's very exciting. All right, so I know I haven't really sent an update since when she first started. Um, just a quick little update for now, the end of her first two weeks. Um, she's really come out of her shell. Um, the, the submissive elimination, the peeing, has really dropped down. The only times I really notice it is when I'm getting her out of the kennel next door. I think she's just really overstimulated in there. So me going to put the leash on her, she typically will dribble a little bit. And if I try to work with her before I let her go out, she's much more amped up in doing that still a little bit. Um, but otherwise, um, significant improvement. Um, when she first got here, if I looked at her, she was peeing herself. So we could only go up from that. Um, I wanted to really focus on things that are going to um, boost her confidence and strengthen, like condition her body. I think a little bit uh, what the reason for the submissive elimination is just like social pressure. Um, so she gets really unconfident and when she's put in those things, she just kind of leaks, right? So I wanted to tackle the emotional part of it and the physical part of it. So instead of just like forcing a bunch of obedience on her, I kind of let her take the wheel and self-explore and um, figure out things on her own terms and then get rewarded for that. Um, I did, instead of just giving her food morning and evening and lunch and all that stuff, she just works for her food. So I, I have a refrigerator over here where I keep all her stuff um, and throughout the day I'll bring her out and we'll do some training. Um, if she decides that she doesn't really want to take any food, I just put her away and we'll try again later. Um, so I want her kind of relying on me for that part of her life so that she is more motivated and wants to take the things that I have to offer. Um, so uh, I know like the first video I sent where she was doing a target where she was going, she'd kind of sniff it and then I click with the clicker and she'd get food. I'm just, I branched from that. Um, so we have this big peanut thing over here. Hey, climb. So she just gets rewarded for things like that. Um, very good. So she's strength building and she figured that out on her own where I just successive approximated it, successively approximated her to it where at first she was sniffing it. Um, and then I kind of did kind of help her a little bit by luring the food. And when she kind of put her foot on it, good girl then uh, that is what the oh my gosh presented the food. And then um, something with this, I wanted to free shape a heel position. She typically drags when we're walking around and so we're gonna get to that. But right now I want, again, I wanna free shape and I want her to think that it's her idea and that she's cultivating it. Climb. Very good. So when she's on there, when she uses her back end, when she independently moves, okay, independently moves her back end, um, she's creating a heel position. Climb. Oops, I dropped it. But her learning and figuring out how to use her back end independently is going to strengthen her core and hopefully help with those muscles that uh, control her urination. That's my goal at least. Okay. There we go. Good girl. The other thing that I'm doing with her is literally addressing the, <clears throat> the physical act of someone reaching over to her or reaching into her space. I want her to think of that as a good thing. So what I've been doing is I reach towards her and I click and reward. Um, initially, that um, immediately presented with urination. Um, so I just clicked her reward through it. I didn't want to punish her. I wanted her just to start learning, oh, like when this happens, I get part of the food. And then, gradually, that peeing stopped, and now I click and reward when she doesn't pee, right? Hi! So she's learning for that interaction to be a positive one, and not one where she's being confronted um, and feeling threatened or feeling overstimulated. Very good. But I have noticed like the way that, hi, her back end is, it, it seems a little bit under, undertoned, under muscled. 
So I really want to help with her body conditioning and just strengthening those muscles. So you see, she's really happy to have those types of inter interactions. Um, my next step after today is going to be doing this exact uh, exercise with the other staff members um, and addressing the crate stuff. Like she's finding the crate, good job. Um, she seems to be a little bit uh, possessive of that space and if dogs or people walk by sometimes we're kind of like barking them through the crate. Um, so we'll, I'll work with her through, with that and getting her in and out of the crate. I, uh, same, this exact same picture, I want her to think of it as a positive experience while being careful not to put her into an over arousal state where she feels like she needs to pee. Hi, good job, pretty good. So it's been two weeks. Uh, I'm hoping that she makes her improvements even more. And then once she's good with the pee stuff, we'll actually start really pinpointing obedience stuff. Sit. Good. Um, and building her confidence with those types of things. Okay. I haven't made a huge push for actual obedience because I needed to change her mindset first. I felt like if I started like, let's do all of these things and drilling her, she wouldn't feel as comfortable with me as I, as I, as I need her to feel like she does right now. Hi! Good job! Good girl! Hi! Hi! You see, like, she's not peeing, but she still kind of has the, like, the wonky hind end. Um, I just don't think she literally had as much control as she needed with that. And the fact that she is really underconfident and overstimulated easily just was a recipe for that. Most dogs grow out of it. Like that's a pretty common thing for puppies to submissive eliminate when they're like a little bit overstimulated. Um, most of them grow out of it. My female shepherd, she did the same thing when she was little, when she was, I don't remember the exact age, but around like, six months when I would go to greet her, she'd be really excited and she would dribble a little bit. And I was like, oh gosh, she's one of those. Uh, she's not a super confident dog, um, but she did grow out of it through confidence building. Hi! Good job, so we just, she's just late to the game with all of that. Um, and when we get together, we'll go over ways in the family dynamic to not put her in those situations. And so that she can kind of learn that exact, what she's doing here, maybe. She can learn that stuff with you guys too so that she's not peeing all over the place and not feeling like she needs to protect her space so much. Um, a lot of times when we have dogs that are a little more sensitive and there are young children in the home, um, if we're not giving these dogs that, that advocacy and time alone, um, sometimes they take it upon themselves to create that space or they just kind of lose, um, they lose the ability to, to remove themselves or to um, I don't know the word I want to use. Like they just kind of like, oh, a bite because I don't know what else, how else to react to this. Maisie, good job. Thank you. All right.